Hi, I'm Jay Thomas from Jane Thomas Auto, and I've got a good friend of mine, Calvin Jansen, here with me, and we're going to talk about his amazing Chrysler behind us. But first off, they call you old car doctor, right? Yeah, yeah, That's... mostly because I'm old and I work on cars. <laughs> no, no, because I work on old cars. <laughs> yeah, and that's that's your business, right? You, yep. you do that all the time. You're always I mean, you've been under the hood of just about everything in this parking lot, it well, seems. Probably about half of them. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. By, the, by the way, we're joining you from a Shifters Car Club uh, meetup. It's a, a w night, on 8th yeah. Street, a hop night, and it's a beautiful night. So the parking lot's filling up right now. Let's take a look at this thing. So tell okay. me the story. This is, uh, what, what, what is it? A 1962 Chrysler Newport. Newport. Which is a U.S. model. Okay. Um, it's funny, I was actually looking for a 61 because I'm a real fan of the fins, you know. And yeah. I, I'd been bugging a friend of mine to find me a 61 two-door hardtop for years, and he wasn't coming up with anything. So I was out at his place one day, and I said, uh, you haven't found me one yet. And he goes, well, why don't you just buy that one out in the back 40? And I said, yeah, that's a 62. I don't care for them. I didn't, didn't have the fins. And then he told me that it was a factory floor shift standard car. And in a full-size Chrysler, that's very unusual. Yeah. Very unusual. No kidding. So uh, I, I had to have it. So after getting it, I had done quite a bit of research on it, and it appears that it's one of seven built. Seven? Yes. One of seven? One of seven. And uh, so it was originally a 361. Yep. Three-speed standard, because Chrysler didn't have a four-speed transmission until 63. Okay. But um, it turns out that they built these seven. There, there were more... 62 Chryslers with three-speed standards. Okay. But this particular one was one of a run of exactly seven that were built for the Enforcer program as demonstrators for like um, uh, Highway Patrol and Sheriff's Divisions and stuff down in the States. Yep. Uh, they sent them out to these dealers uh, to the or to these sheriffs and, and heads of departments who drove them as demonstrators. They wanted big cars with standard trannies and big blocks for highway pursuit cars. Cool. So they would drive them for a short while and then they would return them to Chrysler. Well, Chrysler, they, they're just selling this new 62 Chrysler. It was quite a restyle, getting yep. rid of the fins. That's and, right. So and, these, they, and these crazy headlights, yes. right? Well, 61 had that already. Right. But. So they sent them out um, to smaller dealers that were having a little trouble making a go of it, you yep. know? And, uh, and they were told that they paid apparently $1 for the car. The dealer <laughs> paid $1 for it, and they could keep all the profit from it, but the condition was they couldn't put it on the showroom floor. It had to sit out front and center in the lot saying, you can own a 1962 Chrysler for as little as you know, one of those things, right? Yeah, right. So good advertising for Chrysler, and the dealer got to keep all the cash. Sure, right? sure. So, and this was one of the seven. All seven of them were white like this, with yep. the red interior, with the standard transmission, and a 361. Um, I, I bought it accidentally. Like, I didn't know any of that <laughs> stuff about it. I was just, because it was a full-size Chrysler with a standard transmission, I kind of had to have it. Yeah. And then it's got no power steering and no power brakes. It's it's what I call high driver input. <laughs> so it's you got to mean it to drive it yeah. around the block even. You that's know? right. That's right. I, I kind of bought it as a distraction. I was just going to kind of tinker with it over the course of a couple of years and part with it. And, yep. But uh, I kind of got attached to it. Well, you want to pop the hood for me? Yeah. So I, I dropped a valve in it after about two years, and that's when I got in a little deeper. Okay. So... So now it's got a 440 in it. Awesome. It's a completely stock 440, but uh, I put these long rams on. I found them on eBay Yep. because I was under the hood of this thing shortly after I bought it, and I realized it had this recess for the air cleaner here. Yeah. And uh, it had kind of the recessed inner fenders, and I thought, those would fit. Sure. So I had to. Cool. So, And it, it's been like this now for... Well, 11 or 12 years. I've had the car 14 years. Wow. And uh, and this gets me 20 plus miles to the gallon on the highway. It's so reliable and very drivable. And we do drive the wheels off it, as you know. I mean, yeah. you've seen it around everywhere. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. yeah. Uh, I did have to finally refurbish the interior. The seats were so threadbare. And it was, I, I the car otherwise is original paint. Yeah, sure. Sure. But, uh, but the interior just, it had to be, it had to be a comfortable place. You sure. Know? Yeah. So, and I mean, some Kragers 
Well, no, actually, Not those quite. are those are Supremes. Oh, Supremes, okay. Yeah, they're kind of a more period correct wheel for the car. Yeah, Kregers sure. were more of a kind of a mid '60s thing, and these started out a little bit earlier than that. And I thought that they would look proper on the car. So what's interesting is that this normally, when it wasn't a manual, was an automatic, but a push push button. Push right? button, right? And that's the first thing everybody comments on when they see it. They're like, "Oh, so push button automatic?" Uh, no, this one was a standard. Oh, so even the plate on there has yeah. never had the holes punched. Yeah, so. the, the plate is still there, yeah. but the the speedometer is just so cool. Like it's yeah. so futuristic and retro, and and at at the same time, it's so you know space age. I oh, guess. totally space age. They there were a number of different names they went by. They some some of them some uh, uh, brochures I read called them the Paleovescent Astrodome instrument cluster <laughs> and what they are they're they're actually electroluminescent lighting really so there's no bulbs in there and each needle on each gauge including the speedometer needle and all of the faces of the gauges and the numbers on the speedometer are actually light emitting and they run on about 300 volts ac wow so it has a little amplifier mounted down inside a, a, a oscillator amplifier circuit mounted down inside the kick panel that converts the battery 12 volts sure. to this 300 volts AC and makes these things glow really cool. Oh, that's oh, really awesome. Super neat at night, yeah. Yeah. Yep. It's uh, but, uh, it's uh, it's seen some miles, obviously. Like it you, has. you pulled it out of the back 40, you said, right? Yes, it was literally, it was actually, it had been in a slough at one point, which explains <laughs> this, uh, this experience down here. Yeah, that's right, yeah. <laughs> um, and uh, any of the damage and stuff. I have never touched any part of this car up with paint. This is exactly as I bought it. Yep. I just cleaned it. And uh, well, as I say, I did the seats, but well, I had a friend do them. But uh, yeah, other than that, it's it's undisturbed from the way it was. The patina is great though. Another you know? really bizarre thing, and I've been debating taking care of this, but you might notice there's these screws in the center of this molding. Okay. Okay, both sides, both fenders. And I thought, why would they do that? Those moldings are very hard to come by. Sure. I have another perfect set, and I've been debating changing them out, but if you reach up inside the fender here. Oh. It's got one of those lights, like the we would, bulb. like the old sex lights we'd put under the dash, you know, the <laughs> little purple ones, right? But this one, uh, they were they were red, and the guy that had it, a fella named Wilbur Dick from Prince Albert, he had put those on there with the little red acorn lenses on them, and it would glitter off of his hubcaps as he drove. It was an old cruiser kind of a thing, so I, I thought, nah, I'm leaving them. That's so it cool. still got them in there. Do and they work? No, I haven't wired them up. Okay. They weren't wired when I got it, and I haven't rewired them, but I've left them just because I thought it was kind of cool. That's pretty you know? sweet. Actually, and that, that's another funny thing, because on my on my first date with Rochelle, Yep. Okay. Um, we were going to go to a stock car race. Okay. When a girl asks you to go to a car race, you <laughs> you go, right? Yeah. So, so I said, well, is it okay if I pick you up in an old car? And she's like, yeah, that'd be fine. So... Meanwhile, she calls me back and says, is it okay if my youngest daughter comes along? And I said, as long as I can bring my youngest daughter. So now it's no longer a date. Now it's just a get together. Family right? affair. I show up with this car and she goes, I know that car. Really? She grew up in PA and she knew Wilbur's kids. Really? Yeah. So the whole idea of keeping it for a few years and getting rid of it, nah, not, she won't let me. No. I'm, no, it's like part of the family I'm now. Stu it's, I'm stuck with it for the rest of my life yeah. now, apparently. And it's so awesome. And I'm you know? okay with that. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And you just, you know, the, the best part is that it's so <laughs> tough. And oh. it's got the all little ding and dent. So you're not afraid to take it and put it in a parking lot, you right? You can park it in a parking lot. You can enjoy it. You can take it anywhere. You don't have to worry about it. Yeah. That's pretty yep. awesome. Yep. I well, it. if anybody's looking for work, I know we can send them your way, right? Old car doctor. Hey, yeah. I specialize in electrical. Uh, a lot of people's idea of old is different than mine. Um, uh, to me, an old car is anything like 73 and older, okay? But I kind of had to moderate that a bit, and I kind of stick with 1980 <laughs> and older. Okay. So, because I get a lot of people calling me and they're saying, yeah, can you work on my 97 Jeep? It's an old car. And no, there's lots of shops around that'll do that. That's right. And because I'm so passionate about these cars, uh, 
it's very difficult for people that own these sorts of things to find some place that they can trust to work with their car. Yes, it and is. I, and I don't have a shop. So I go to your shop. Yep. That way it's there overnight. When I'm gone, your car is still there. You know exactly where it is. Nobody's messing with it. Yeah. You know, and don't have to worry about who's driving it. That's yeah. right. Yeah. And and I, I charge 60 bucks an hour, which is pretty reasonable. Yep. To come to you to take care of stuff. You yeah. Know? So no doubt. yeah, and it's no it's been working out pretty good. I'm terribly busy, but that's all right. That's good. We'll keep yeah. it that way. Yeah. Thank you for joining me. Hey, no problem. Yeah, I'm sure we'll talk to you more sometime soon. Oh, I'm certain. Yeah. 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 Thanks again for joining us and more videos like this, jthomasauto.ca, as well as on Facebook and Instagram. I'm Jay Thomas.